Hey there, ladies and gentlemen. Book of Bobard is here and back with part three of my strategy guide. All right, so uh, yeah, I'm just continuously running around here with these zombies, and we're just going for points because you know everybody likes points, especially with the bank in this one. You want to build as many points as possible because then you can just fill it right up. And then if you do end up having a bad game where you can't get on your feet, you know, you keep dying, you don't have no points or whatever, go grab some money from the bank and get yourself on your feet, you know. I like to keep my uh, bank full, and I, I rarely ever use it, you know, just uh, unless I'm above my highest round, then I'll use it. Uh, right here, bad decision. Don't ever do this. You can get trapped very easily like you see me about to. Like, I, I got lucky there and just kind of got around that one, but it's uh, something you want to be careful of running into the uh, garage section of the uh, diner place right so uh, yeah here you're gonna see me run that you that I was talking about see like that that's what I mean by you right and then I kind of stopped there I only did it once because I only needed to do it once but if they're all coming from that one direction you're, you're not gonna be able to make it through that was a constant stream of zombies so just stop turn around sprint and uh, do the other side of the you just rewrite it you know so yeah that's that's what I meant in the last video Alright, so here, uh, I am putting the piece on the zombie shield because I did just grab it there, almost died for it, so I was like, you know what, I, uh, I'm gonna take that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I also like, uh, making sure that I only have one, uh, equipment active at a time. I mean, it's not too important, really, like, it's, it's not a big deal, but, like, I, I generally get one thing destroyed before I pick up another, like you kind of saw me do there, just because that way I know where it is. At all times, it's at the place where you originally pick it up, you know. And so, right now, round 11 is the first time I'm hitting the box here, right? And I just, I, there's no need to hit the box before it. Like, that pistol racks in the points for me, and uh, I, don't, I don't need to, to, uh, to hit the box beforehand because you don't, need, you don't need a good weapon to survive zombies. You need to be able to run around the zombies in order to survive zombies, right? And uh, right there, I'm just kind of showing you, you know, what, what to do if you get backed up into a corner. Just whip out your uh, zombie shield if you got it. It's very effective. Uh, yeah, just hit in the box here. I mean, get get the weapon that you want. Because you can look how much money I have from just sitting there doing the circle with the, uh, the zombies there. And then something that I, that I was doing right there is I picked up that weapon. And I was like, oh, I, I'm very against shooting when at no zombies, just wasting ammo. Even if I am in a situation that I'm in like that. But uh, normally I don't. And then right there I was like, you know what? I'll, I'm hitting the box. I'm going to trade this weapon out right away. And so what did I do? I shot a couple shots out of the pistol. Because who cares, right? And then you notice that I lost the uh, the box. The box went away. Because of the bear. And so I was like, oh, it's not a big deal. I'll run to the next place and I'll still be able to trade out this pistol. And what happened? The round ended. No idea how, but... That is the exact reason why you never want to waste any ammo in any of your weapons ever. Even if you think that you're going to be able to get to the next box or that the box isn't going to go away because you've just hit it the first time, it might. Alright, stuff happens. Like, I have no idea why that zombie died, but he did, and now I'm stuck with this pistol. Which, I mean, is fine by me. It's not like I need a really good weapon, but it's not what I wanted to happen, you know? And so, you just, you got to be very careful of that. There's no point in doing that kind of stuff if, like, you don't need to, right? And right here is somewhere where you don't want to get stuck as well. I find that uh, underneath that area, I, I, I tend to die every once in a while. Because it's, with the pool table there, it makes, like, very, it makes the passageways around in that area kind of small. And so it's, it's difficult sometimes to get around. Anyways, yeah, I'm just going to round them up here. Circle. I can do a circle anywhere, right? The, every, every single place is big enough to do a circle. Some of them aren't as good, like the farm and the uh, power place. I don't like doing circles as much. But, uh, I mean, every place is big enough to do it, so you, you should be able to do it. doesn't matter what weapon you have, just rock your circle. As long as you have Juggernaut, you'll be fine. And even if you don't, just play it a little bit more safe. All right, so right here, you see me trying to uh, open that teleporter right there, and that is, uh, I, uh, I've died a couple times there as well, trying to open up that teleporter mid-round, because you've got all the zombies coming at you. You've got the big fire pit right there, and the denizens jumping on your head. The combination of just where they spawn... I find generally, like, it screws with me a lot. <laughs> I'm not very good at uh, getting that teleporter open. I mean, uh, I get it sometimes, but it's, it's kind of risky. And so right here, I'm just going to teleport around for the, uh, for the box. And then I look at where the box is, and I was like, wait a second. Was it back at the town? But uh, no, it's, it's not. 
I, uh, I kind of worried myself there. I was like, did I actually just teleport away from the box? <laughs> but uh, no, as you see here, it's actually at the power place. So we'll hop in the teleporter and go there. And uh, I mean, I don't generally recommend hitting the box mid-round, especially if it's at uh, if, if it's at a place like the uh, bus depot or somewhere in the town. It's generally fairly easy to hit it mid-round, but if you get it at the farm, the diner, or the power place here, it's uh, those those spots are not good for the box to be. So uh, a tip, if you have the money, I mean, sometimes I'll just hit the box till it moves because I don't want it in that spot for next round just in case, you know, just in case I need to hit it because of something happens and I run out of ammo and all, all of my guns really, really quickly and I don't have any ammo, no max ammo in sight. And so, yeah, you just want to hit the box mid round. You don't want it to be in a place like the farm. I find the farm is the worst because they can jump right up on that ledge there. So, uh, but anyways, I am going to go do what I just advised you from doing and hit the box in the power place mid round because, uh, well, I'm, I'm generally confident that I that I can survive it. I mean, if and if you are, go for it, right? You want to do it, do it. Uh, the other thing is, like, I just pulled out my zombie shield there. I still do have the zombie shield, which is very effective because you can trap yourself in a corner, whip it out, and then uh, push them back and save yourself, right? So that's, it's just something that uh, you can easily do. And uh, there you go. I have the SMR I just got. That gun, I don't, I don't grab. I would rather have the war machine, the ballistics knife, anything but the SMR. Even though you can get your points back with it, I hate it. I hate it so much. Uh, I guess the reason why is because it's, it's ridiculously inaccurate. Like, I have not seen a gun that is inaccurate as that one. Like, even this RPG shoots where you're pointing it. That one, if you aim at a wall from about 10 feet away and you're aiming down your sights, and you shoot one bullet, you will miss by about 2 feet. It'll be off to the right, left, top, bottom, whatever. And that just drives me nuts. And that combined with the fact that it has absolutely no damage, uh, it's semi-automatic, which is bad for me because I have a terrible trigger finger. And... Uh, I don't, I don't know, I just, I don't like a single thing about that gun, so I, I, I don't even pick it up. At least the ballistics knife, you can run fast with it, you know? Like, it gives you some, something. Whereas the SMR, I just find, doesn't give me anything. Uh, so, I kind of wanted to talk about when uh, you're playing uh, with other people, co-op and zombies. Kind of a, a way to uh, pick people up if you don't have quick revive and you don't have a lot of time because the zombies are right behind you. And uh, it's kind of, it's, it's a very difficult maneuver to pull off. But if you can do it, it can buy you an extra, a full second. Like a one Mississippi, plus you're in a better spot to run away after you've revived them than when you started reviving them. And so I'll just give you a little clip of what I'm talking about right here. Alright, so uh, I, this is just round one and it's not like the prime example of it because I just wanted to get the footage up to show you what it is. But you start reviving and then you move around him and then you end up on the other side by the time you finish reviving him. All right, and I'm going to show this again here in slow motion. And uh, the reason why this helps so much is because the zombies take a while getting around the person on the ground. And uh, I don't really know why that is, but it, it's very helpful. to uh, for, Because you, you, you end up on the other side of the player and that you're reviving. And that's helpful because when the zombies are coming at you, they're obviously coming from behind you. If you just sprinted to go pick somebody up... So when you do that, you get from being the first thing that the zombies hit to the second thing, because the person you just revived is now the first thing, which you think, oh, okay, well, <laughs> Bookable Bard, you're kind of an ass. I mean, you're making him go down again, which is yes, but who, who's going to be better at clutching it? The person who just went down or the person who is being able to revive the person, right? Because I've, I've got all my perks and stuff, so I'm going to be able to get them up again, hopefully. And, I mean, if the person goes down 20 times and you keep reviving them like that and they keep going down, I mean, it, at some point, you're going to end the round. And then uh, you're going to you're gonna end run the round and you're going to be able to, uh, like, get him up and he'll be able to stay up and then, you know, he'll be good. So the point of reviving him like that isn't, to per se, to get him up on his feet but maybe to just uh, make the time that you have to revive him a little bit longer, because if he goes up and then goes back down, the time restarts, right? And uh, something to note is when you're also doing that revive, is don't shoot any of the zombies that are behind you. Don't shoot any of them. Get them all gathered up behind you, 
and then wait and do a couple circles and just wait and don't go near the person that you're trying to revive and then rush into the person that you're trying to revive because you are faster than the zombies. The zombies are about as fast as you are when you're not sprinting, right? And if you get them all behind you, then they're not going to be coming at you from all angles, but only that one angle, which you are then moving away from, right? And so, yeah, I, I find that that revive technique works really well. You might want to practice it. It's uh, sometimes difficult to do because you have to move both the joysticks at once and kind of very slowly. And uh, again, if the person being revived moves, it'll probably f mess up and it won't work. All right, so uh, I've just been speeding up this part here because all I'm doing is running around uh, different places grabbing stuff. So I went and I grabbed double tap there, and now I'm just here hitting the box. And uh, I got my two favorite weapons, the RPD and hammer. Sweet, love those. Uh, not a big fan of the ray gun because the ray gun can get you killed, and let's face it, the zombies kill us often enough. We don't need to be killing ourselves, right? And uh, that's the same problem I have with the Mustang and Sally, and more so with the Mustang and Sally because they create bigger explosions, and there's two of them, so you are constantly firing off more bullets faster, and you just get yourself killed more often, I find. Right, so anyways, here we're back. I uh, stopped slowing it down here, and uh, I started the round on the bus here. Specifically because, well, for two reasons. One, I was getting bored and just, you know, running around, so I was like, okay, I'm starting it, whatever. So I went and I started the round. And secondly, because I wanted to show you guys that, uh, like, a lot of you think might think that the bus is a death trap kind of thing. You're kind of in an enclosed space, and you're just going to get overwhelmed really quick, but I mean... It's, it's not that bad, really. Uh, you've got all these windows to repair, but uh, with a technique that I'll show you in about 30 seconds here, it's, it's not too bad to repair them all. Plus, if you have a half-decent weapon, like I do have the hammer, so I am going to make it look fairly easy here, which isn't really fair. But at the same time, I'm not even going to move. I'm going to stand in one spot at the front of the bus here and uh, chuck an EMP there just so the bus doesn't even move. So that, like, I, I've got a full time here and I'll watch. I'm just going to stand here and just shoot the zombies and reload. And I mean, I guess the, I, I wouldn't say that the, it's the hammer that lets me do this. I would say it's the perks. Right? I've got my double tap there where I have to shoot two, three bullets and it pops their heads right off. Uh, quick reload makes it so, or speed reload. So I don't like, you know, two seconds. Look at that reload. So fast. Right? Juggernaut so I can take a couple hits from uh, them exploding and all that. Like, honestly, it is just perks, guys. Uh, right there, I did have to scramble for a second because I reloaded at a bad time. I didn't even need to. But for the most part, like, I'm not even moving. Like, it, it's not hard. You can hold down the bus. It's fairly easy. And again, uh, with this uh, repairing the barriers technique that I'm about to show you right here, look at this. You just, you hold X and you walk up and down the windows right there. And bam, you can repair all of them at once. It is so much faster than doing one at a time. And this is really helpful if you don't have... Uh, a good gun and you want to keep all the zombies out you can do this and you can single-handedly keep out almost all the zombies all right grab the top, uh, pistol off the top of the bus and you could do this on round 30 without any perks and just run up and down here and just try to avoid being hit uh, from the zombies when they reach through the windows and you can hold them all out i've done it before it's possible it's hard but it's possible i just like want to show you get this look see get one hit got all my health back get hit again right like, you, you do get hit a little bit, I'm not saying it's ridiculously easy without any perks and just that pistol, but I'm just saying it's possible. And the bus is, it can be a very useful place to hold down, especially if you've got all the pieces on it, uh, which I don't recommend having the uh, the hatch on it, the part that allows you to get on the top from the inside, because I would rather have that uh, on the diner so you can have galvan knuckles. But if you have the other two parts on it, uh, they can't come from the front of the bus because you've got that piece of the train and the ladder there really you know like it just lets you up top and then once you're up top there the zombies once they're inside are so so very slow and you can just uh really just tank on them right before they get to you so uh yeah i just kind of wanted to show you that there uh that the bus is an option that you have uh and something that kind of unfortunate something that is kind of unfortunate that happened up here is when i was actually playing this game i got called into work so i was like all right no big deal i'll just pause it and then i'll go to work whatever it. But when I was at work, uh, somebody unfortunately turned off my Xbox, so I had to restart the game. So here we are in this restart of the game, and uh, I'm just starting it off on round 13 here because we've already done the previous rounds, so there's no need to do those ones again. Uh, and what you see me doing here is I'm stockpiling claymores. 
uh, I didn't notice this, but uh, apparently in this game there's a claymore limit that you can have. You can only have a certain amount stockpiled at once. And uh, again, you see me going in there into the uh, diner area when the zombies are coming at me, which is not a smart idea. Don't do that. <laughs> they just they come from all angles in there, very narrow passageways. You can't get around them. Not the uh, greatest thing to do, but again, I'm, I'm doing it because every once in a while it just gets stupid. <laughs> So yeah, we're just going to run around in circles here for actually quite a while. And uh, I'm just going to gather them all up, shoot them, use up all my ammo, and then go hit the box and grab another weapon, use up all the ammo in that, because it's just the best way to rack in points, you know? So getting headshots and stuff. This game I actually end up with quite a few headshots. Generally, I've, I've got about, uh, if I've got 1,000 kills, I'll have 500 headshots. Kind of deal. I think this one I end up with about 1,800 kills and 1,200 headshots, so can a, a, a like decent amount more than uh, what I normally have. So as you may have noticed, I uh, I actually lost my guns in this game on round 13. I don't have the hammer and RPD like I did in the last game, which is unfortunate. Cause I still gotta hit the box and stuff, but I'm gonna do that fairly quickly in this one, and I'm just gonna be grabbing stuff and then shooting it right away. Uh, cause that's just how I like to do it. Generally, you know, just round them up waste all the ammo on a gun even if it's a bad gun and then just uh, go grab a new one uh right here i'm just gonna be i'm gonna open up the door and close it a whole bunch to the bus here because i want the bus to leave before the round starts it doesn't actually end up leaving before the round starts but that does make the bus uh go quicker it will be there for a while if you don't interact with it at all but if you uh jump on the bus and don't touch the doors or you open and close the doors or you uh, hop on the ladder on the back or anything like that basically anything where you touch the bus it will uh, start like going it'll wait about two seconds it'll beep its horn once uh, do its little thing and then it'll go again and it'll beep again and then it'll start moving and right there you see the only flaw to this circle here which is uh, when the bus comes you get very like claustrophobic there's a very small area it cuts the your circle area in a little bit more than half like you have no room there and so you kind of just saw me doing the u very tightly against that wall there and i didn't want to try to crawl under the uh, garage door because if a zombie was coming the other way and i got stuck it wouldn't be very good i'd probably die and i don't even have the ride shield on my back at this point so not really the best decision so yeah uh I want to talk a little bit about uh, loadout, kind of like, you know, your multiplayer loadout. In Black Ops 2, they did the pick 10 thing. So in this, uh, I want to talk about the, the loadout that I have for zombies. And that is always with the exception of uh, differing weapons and occasionally differing grenades. Uh, every once in a while, I like to use Semtexes over frags. But anyways, so we've got the, we've got the Juggernaut, Double Tap, Speed, Cola, and Stamina up as my four perks. Right? I always get claymores now because I've realized how beautiful claymores are and how helpful they can be. And then the other thing I have is monkeys. I will take monkeys over EMP grenades. And then you have uh, the frag grenades or semtexes. I mean, sometimes I prefer frags, sometimes I prefer, prefer semtexes. Uh, the only reason I really don't prefer semtexes is because when you throw them, uh, they get stuck to a zombie, obviously, which is really nice because then, you know, you have perfect grenades every time. But the problem is the zombies are coming for you. So they, it's kind of like the grenade follows you and you have to book it away if you don't want to uh, get hurt by the grenade that you just threw. You know? And another thing to be careful of is if you throw a grenade in the smoke and a uh, denizen jumps on you, <laughs> if, like if you do it at the, at the perfect time, which I've done a couple times, you'll throw the grenade and it'll hit the denizen which will then jump onto your face and then you've got a grenade stuck in your face it doesn't kill you uh most of the time but uh it does hurt you quite a bit and so that's something you want to be careful of and that doesn't happen if you have frags that's only semtex and uh if you don't actually know where to get semtex grenades they are in the town in the room where the uh, bus part is you have to open it with a power turbine and they're uh, right up there on the wall to the left as soon as you walk through that door. All right, so this is going to be drawing this video here to a close, and I know I only got through about four rounds, but we'll speed it up a little bit uh, in the next uh, couple of videos here. But, yeah, thanks for watching. I'm Bookable Bard, and I'm out, and I'll continue my conversation of uh, the loadout in the next uh, video here. All right, see you guys there.